Okay, Sherlock, you're up. Eric, Samantha, and Charlotte were playing volleyball on the beach. It was pretty hot, and one of the friends invited the others to go swimming in the sea. One of them can't go swimming because, well, they're a robot. Okay, can you guess who? It's Samantha. First, she's the only one who's not sweaty or red in the cheeks because of the heat. Plus, it might seem like she's wearing a small necklace, but it's actually a USB port. It helps her stay plugged in, you know. Jane was riding the bus back from work. She was tired after a long day, but she couldn't sit down because it was so packed. Some of the other passengers were acting strangely, and she was worried that they might have been zombies. Which passengers are zombies? There are two zombies on the bus. The man on the right has a bandage on his arm, and the woman next to the window is making groaning noises. Um, I can get off here. No, really. Josh loves to make bets with his friends. Last Friday, he bet them that he could place a bottle in the middle of the room and easily crawl into it. This time, nobody thought he had any chance of completing the challenge. So, Josh's friends were certain they would win. But somehow, Josh won the bet again. How did he manage to do it? He said he could place a bottle in the room and crawl into it. He didn't mention whether he was going to crawl into the bottle or the room, though. So, he crawled into the room without any problem and won the bet. Oh, that crazy Josh. On the table, there's a row of six cups. The first three are empty, but cups number four, five, and six are full. You need to change the order so that the empty and full cups alternate. You can only touch one cup, and you can't push or move the cups with the help of another cup. How do you do it? Grab cup number 5 and pour the water into cup 2, then put it back. Mary was walking in the woods and saw a really fancy castle in the distance. It was getting late, so she thought she might ask to stay the night there. When she knocked on the door, though, it was answered by a troll. And he really didn't like intruders. He captured her and locked her up in a dungeon with two guards. The troll told her that she could escape if she solved a puzzle. There are two doors in the room. One is locked and the other leads to freedom. The guards know which door will set Mary free, but she can ask them only one question. One of the guards always tells the truth and the other always lies. I have friends like that. Mary doesn't know which one can be trusted and only has one chance to win her freedom. What question should she ask? If Mary says, if I ask your colleague to show me the way to freedom, what door will it be? No matter which guard replies, they will show the locked door. One will lie and show the wrong door, and the one who doesn't lie would also show the wrong door, since it would be chosen by the one who lies. This way, Mary knows the wrong door, and she needs to choose the other one. You have two ropes and a box of matches. If you light both sides of the rope, it'll burn for 60 minutes. How can you use these ropes to measure 45 minutes? You need to burn one of the ropes from both sides. At the same time, you set light to one side of the second rope. When the first rope burns down, the second rope will still have 30 minutes to go. Now you need to set on fire the second end of the rope. It'll burn two times faster, and you'll burn both ropes in 45 minutes. And what's going to happen in 45 minutes is still a mystery. Everyone in town thought Jack was silly, because every time someone offered him a choice between a 50-cent coin or a $1 bill, he would always choose the 50-cent coin. People all over town would give him this same offer to see if he would ever learn. He never grabbed the bill one time. The people in the town didn't realize that Jack was actually a genius. What was so smart about what Jack was doing? Jack was actually really smart because he got everyone in the town to shower him with free money. 
as long as he continued to choose the less valuable option, people would come and try this trick on him over and over again. See that car? Jack's been refusing $1 bills for over 10 years now, and he saved up enough money to get a car. Three men were trying to decide who was the smartest among them. A random passerby offered to help. He said he would give them a riddle, and whoever managed to crack it could call themselves the smartest. He said, You see these five caps in my hands? Three of them are black, and two are white. Close your eyes. The three men closed their eyes. He put a black cap on each of them and hid the two white caps in the bag. Now you can open your eyes. Whoever guesses the color of the cap he is wearing is the smartest. The men spent ages looking at each other, trying to crack the riddle. Suddenly, one of them worked it out and shouted, I'm wearing a black cap. Now how did he guess? Ah well, he didn't actually guess. He tried to think logically, but there was no logical answer. So he looked at his reflection in a nearby puddle. You find yourself in a photo gallery. After looking at the wall, you realize that one of the pictures doesn't belong. You see a raccoon, a llama, a football, and a balloon. Can you tell which is the odd one out? You have 7 seconds to guess. It's the llama picture. The other three objects have two double letters in their names, but the llama only has one double. There's a barrel of water in the yard. You look inside and say that it's more than half full, but your friend argues that it's less than half full. How do you figure out who's right without using any tools or removing water from the barrel? Tilt the barrel so the water just about touches its rim. If you can see the bottom, the barrel's less than half full. If the base is still covered with water, it's more than half full. You find yourself in the middle of a forest with three paths in front of you. One is covered with scalding lava. Another is littered with sharp nails and broken glass. And the third path is so cold that it feels like you're in Antarctica. Which path should you choose? Take the third path, it's bound to warm up so. It's so close to the lava that the ice will melt in a few seconds. John was at home sitting in his chair with a book. All of a sudden, his wife's super expensive statue fell and broke in their bedroom. He ran into the room in time to see a stranger jump out the window and run away. John tried to chase him, but his glasses fogged up because of the cold, so he couldn't identify the intruder. When the police arrived, they listened to his story and immediately knew he was lying. Why were they so sure? Anyone who wears glasses knows that they don't fog up when you go from a warm room to the cold outdoors. It's the other way around. The man made the story up because he didn't want to admit that he'd broken the statue himself. One day, a man got caught in the pouring rain. Unfortunately, he had nothing to keep himself dry, not even a hat or an umbrella. Somehow, not a single hair on his head got wet. Why is this? Well, the man was bald. You have three matches. Can you make a six out of them without breaking them into pieces? Who said the number has to be a standard 6? The matches made a perfect Roman numeral 3 right from the get-go. So all you have to do is push the bottoms of the first two matches together into a V, and you've got a Roman numeral 6. Let's imagine you don't know what an elephant looks like. One day, you're going on a safari to watch animals with your friends. One of them points at a rhino and tells you it's an elephant. The other shows you a hippo and claims that it's an elephant. Who would you believe and why? You didn't know what an elephant looked like. But that doesn't mean you didn't know what a hippo or a rhino looked like either. You wouldn't believe either of your friends. It's your first day in the new office. 
Some colleagues don't seem very friendly, and you can't understand why. They also act strangely, never have coffee breaks, and work at least 12 hours a day. A secretary at the reception desk tells you that their company hires robots because they work so hard and aren't addicted to coffee. She tells you to try to stay away from them and avoid making conversation because they aren't programmed to talk to people. It's quite easy to tell who's a robot. Can you guess which one's the robot out of Anna, Mike, and Lucy? It's Mike! He's the only one of the three with a switch on his right. 